Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to not another reading vlog. <laughs> For once in my life, it's not a reading vlog. It's actually a bit of a different video. I haven't done this before, but if you know anything about me, when I am not reading books, I am often reading Reddit. Um, and if I'm not reading Reddit, um, some of my favorite like videos and podcasts to listen to are just people reading Reddit stories and Reddit posts, especially from Am I the Asshole? Um, and I just love it. It's just like such an entertaining time. <laughs> and so I thought I would just like read some bookish related Am I the asshole posts and we could like chat about these together. I don't know. Like I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this video. I just thought this would be a fun video to do because I was watching a bunch of like, am I the asshole like reaction videos? Um, and I was like, I wonder how many like bookish related ones are on there. Cause I know I've seen a couple come through, um, on Twitter, but like, I feel like I don't hear a lot of them on like these other people's like videos and stuff. So I just wanted to take a look um, and I don't know, we'll see. I haven't actually read any of these stories. All I've done is like, I've done a search and I've only read like the titles of them and I've vaguely based on the title, um, like saved these posts so that we could like discuss them together. Okay, so the first one is, am I the asshole for saying that people are allowed opinions and you need thick skin to be a writer? Okay, <laughs> straight off the bat, yes. I feel like there's so much discourse always, always, especially on Twitter about like reviews being for readers and not for authors and like authors being very offended over like four star reviews, even though those are great reviews. Um, basically anything other than a five. And obviously like there's like a two way street, right? Like if you're writing a shit review about something, like don't tag the author, don't like bring it to their attention or anything. Um, but I also think that like, if you're gonna be an author, you either need to like be okay with criticism and like your book not working for everyone, or you need to just like avoid reviews. Like you just need to not read them if they're going to hurt your feelings. You know what I mean? Like your feelings are valid, but like also don't seek them out. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's read this, uh, context. I 32 female write in my spare time and self publish. I don't write literary masterpieces. That's the dream. I dabble in fantasy and erotica and I've amassed a small following and it pays some bills. Some may call it mommy porn. I'm okay with that. I'm not a literature snob. People should be able to like what they like without folks getting bougie over it. I don't know what that means, whatever. Uh, I'm part of an author group where we meet up uh, on Zoom and in person for those who are local to each other. We talk books, writing, getting through blocks, etc. It's fun and great for tips. Situation. A new author, Jane, 28 female, recently joined and we had an in-person meetup and Zoomed with other authors from across the globe. The topic switched to comments slash reviews left by readers on our books. Jane says she didn't understand why folks left negative, sometimes mean reviews, and that it's really shitty and should be stopped. I agreed, but I also said people are entitled to have an opinion on art. That's the beauty of it, right? You can think a painting is hideous, I can think it's great, neither of us are wrong, win-win. And I think it's the same for books, music, etc. It's okay to have a visceral reaction to art, in my opinion. It's serving its purpose and provoking you either way. But she was relentless in that people should be kinder and not leave comments like this book was awful, such a waste of money, etc. She wouldn't drop it. So I said, look, have I had some comments saying my book is shitty? Yes. Does it hurt? Yes. But I'm the one putting my work out there and if folks pay for it, they're entitled to judge it and share that opinion. I can't police their opinions, even the harsh ones. She got mad, flipped the script and said that I was basically condoning hate speech. This is where I might be the asshole. I burst out laughing and said, if you think someone online calling your writing shitty is hate speech, then we come from very different worlds and I'd love to have your problems. Of course, I wish people were kinder, but we set ourselves up to be judged when we share our our work. Your book won't be everyone's cuppa, so you need to have a thick skin, especially to self-pub. Her reply was, you're one of those assholes who leaves shitty reviews and says things like, everyone can write, but not everyone should. How dare you tell me to accept abuse? TBH, I was too busy trying not to piss my pants <laughs> laughing to respond. The group mostly thought readers should be able to share their opinions, but we moved topic quickly. A week on, Jaden's still mad. I've had messages from author friends telling me to apologize to keep the peace, but I'm not sure what I'm sorry for. Um, if anything, she called me an asshole and raised her voice over what I thought a perfectly valid opinion, which she is free to disagree with. See, the beauty of differing opinions. I guess I could say sorry if... I'm the asshole for laughing. 
<laughs> okay, this is exactly what I was talking about when I read the title. Again, like I think who the the OP of this post is like absolutely correct. Like people are allowed to have their opinions. They can be wrong or like you can think they're wrong, but like that's that's the whole point of like a fucking review, right? Like is that every person is entitled to their opinion. I do think like this Jane person like her saying like, oh, people should just be nicer or whatever. This is reminding me of the discourse that happened. If you were on the bookish internet in 2020, 2021, um, when people were posting their worst books of the year uh, video. And I think this discourse comes around like every year kind of. But in 2022, the the, 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 the discourse specifically was that like auth some, some authors were saying like, we've all gone through like so much this year, like, you know, posting a worst books of the year video is just like, just such a mean spirited thing to do. And I'm like, fucking relax, fucking relax. Like, I just, I can't, <laughs> I fucking can't. Um, let's see if there are any good comments. Um, the verdict is obviously not the asshole. Um, if you're not familiar with Am I the Asshole post, basically, um, you can vote that they're not the asshole, as in like the original person who posted is, isn't the asshole and the person they're talking about is the asshole. Um, you're the asshole, which is the other way around. And then there's also um, Everybody Sucks Here, which is both people suck. And then No Assholes Here, which is both parties are not in the wrong. Yeah, the first comment I totally agree with. It says, not the asshole. Jane thinking anyone being mean to her is hate speech screams privilege. I don't even blame you for laughing in her face. I just think it's so funny. Like, like I also would be the same in that situation. Like, I would not know how to react. I would probably just laugh. And I do understand that, like, I am that person who, like, reacts to a lot of things by laughing. And so, like, it can come across as, like, rude and insensitive to laugh, especially when someone is, like, no, like being really serious and like saying things are hurting their feelings. But like sometimes as a person, again, as a person who just laughs as a reactionary response, like it's very hard not to laugh when you like don't know how to respond to something because it's so ridiculous. Um, but again, like I, I can understand how it's like perceived um, when you're laughing, when you probably maybe shouldn't be laughing. But I don't think that OP is like an asshole for laughing. Like it's just, it's just a reactionary response. Um, I feel like the responses to that one are pretty, you know, like cut and dry. So let's move on to the next one. Am I the asshole for wanting my husband to read my published works? I don't know. Like, I don't think that if you're an author, like I, I think that like if I ever were to publish a book, I wouldn't a, I wouldn't want my loved ones to read my book, but also like I wouldn't expect anyone to read my books, but also like I can understand, you know, wanting your spouse or your significant other to be like supportive and like read your works, or if you, especially if you've asked them to. But I don't know, like I always feel like on Reddit, especially if you are familiar with Reddit dynamics, anytime like a couple is involved, it's always a shit show. So we'll see how this one goes. My husband is a wonderful and supportive man, but he says he does not want to read the books I've published because he doesn't want to hurt my feelings if he doesn't like them. I told him it really sucks that he clearly doesn't believe I'm a good writer because he's not even willing to find out if my books are good or not by reading them. I told him that I support his hobbies and interests, but he doesn't support me in mine. I definitely hurt his feelings and now he doesn't really want to talk to me about my books at all. Am I the asshole? <sighs> okay, this is like a weird one because I see at the top, the verdict is asshole, but based on the post itself, like I, again, like I said, like I, I can see both sides here. Like, I don't think that the husband is wrong for not wanting to read the books because again, like, you know, if he doesn't like them, then, you know, he doesn't want to like lie about it. But also I can see how she feels a little hurt. Cause she's like, I just want you to, you know, partake in this a little bit. So like, I can, I don't know. I, 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 based on just the post itself, would say no assholes here, but let's see if there's any comments from OP. Okay, so someone asked info, what kind of books do you write and for which audiences? Is he involved at any other stage of the writing process? OP writes, I write a variety, queer romance, gay erotica, sci-fi fantasy. I ask him for ideas every now and then and he provides suggestions. These have a lot of downvotes. Like OP is getting a lot of downvotes in the comments. I wonder what they're saying in the comments to make people not like them so much. Um, they said, also, he's he is in the target audience of the books I write. Um, and then someone else replied, which might make it hurt more if he doesn't like it, which doesn't mean you're a bad writer, but then are you going to feel bad if he reads it and doesn't like it? How would you honestly react if he said he wasn't a fan and didn't want to continue reading it? Um, OP said, I'd be fine with it. I, can't, I know I can't tell a story that every person likes, but it's 
the fact that he won't even try. This got one downvote, and, like, I... I kind of see, again, I kind of see where OP is coming from because it's like, I think that like, if you're like, oh, I just want you to like, just read through it. Just like, let me know. Like, I don't know. It's cause some people genuinely, like I am, I am also one of those people where I'm like, I genuinely am okay with criticism. Like I just want to know, like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Uh, someone said you're the asshole specifically for that ma manipulative ac accusation of him not believing you're a good writer because he won't read your books. I agree with that. I, I don't think that him, again, I think that it's like him not reading it is not making him an asshole. That's why I don't think like either of them are the assholes. Um, if that's the type of conclusion you draw naturally, I would be scared of hating your work too. Okay. Yeah. Someone said no assholes here. Um, I understand how you must feel because in your eyes, he's just writing you off before giving your books a try. On the other hand, though, he's given you a reason as to why he's not read any of your works. And you're, you saying that you feel like he thinks you're a bad writer likely upset him because that's exactly what he was trying not to do. Yeah, I agree with this comment. It's a little bit longer than that, but like I, um, totally agree with this person. Both sides are entitled to their opinion. And I think both sides are valid, uh, completely valid in their reaction. I'm a little surprised at like all the you're the asshole verdicts. I don't know. Anyway, moving on, next one. Am I the asshole for writing a bad review on a friend's book? <laughs> okay, this one, this one feels juicy. I like this one. And I feel like this is like <laughs> such a good segue from the last one as well. Straight off the bat, I, I would say, generally speaking, if I read a friend's book and I didn't like it, I probably just would keep that to myself. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I kind of feel like I just wouldn't say anything. Also, there's like some sort of a bird of prey outside my window. Anyway, sorry for the distraction. <laughs> Let's dive into the actual host itself. Hi, so I kind of frequent the Bookstagram, Booktube, and Book Talk sphere. Um, <laughs> enough to make some friends on the platform. Um, I signed up to be an eARC reader for one of my book friends to get an early access of the book, which if you don't know is an electronic advanced reader copy reader. It's standard in at least self-publishing a book. It's pretty standard across publishing, even traditional publishing, by the way, just as an aside. Um, and it's meant to pull in reviews before the book comes out to maximize its credibility. In exchange for a free book, you leave an honest review. I read the book, I gave it two out of five stars, and in exchange, I wrote a pretty lengthy review of the book, about 1.1K words. That's, that's a pretty lengthy review. <laughs> Detailing both what I liked and what I thought could be improved and tried to put an emphasis on the fact that I still want to see the author write more and I still enjoyed the book. The next morning, my author friend DM'd me and said that I thought we were friends and it's not a good look to leave bad reviews on other indie authors' books. They said that I should have DM'd them about the review and I should be bringing others up instead of pushing them down. I guess it would have been different if the author were a complete stranger instead of someone I had actually grown a bond with. And I still deleted the review in the end and gave them a five-star rating for the support. But I don't know. The way it was all resolved doesn't feel right to me. Am I the asshole? Um, before I dive into my um, analysis of this, the verdict of this is actually everyone sucks. I think I would agree with that. Like, I think both parties are equally wrong. Whereas in the last one, I feel like both parties were equally not wrong. Um, I think there's like a slight distinction there, but I think in this part, in this case, like I do think OP is wrong for rating it at least. Like I sometimes am in that position when I get an arc, especially from like a book that doesn't have a lot of ratings and is by specifically like an author of color. If I didn't like the book, sometimes I will just review it without the rating so that it doesn't impact the overall rating, but so that people can still read my review. And I do think that this person did in their review, it sounds like try to mitigate like the negativity around it, where they said, you know, I said what I liked, what I didn't like, what I want to see more of. And I think that that is fine. Um, obviously we don't have the context of like what their review actually said. So it's hard to say like how accurate that is to, to what they actually wrote. But I think that the rating itself is where I would personally say like, you should probably know not to do that. Again, especially like I also think, especially with like indie books, like if there's not a lot of ratings on Goodreads and you're giving it a low rating, it's just like you just know it's going to tank their overall average. And so like I typically speaking would also refrain from rating, but I would leave a review. So that's how I would personally handle it. 
And I do think the author friend is valid in saying, like, if they're friends, like, they should have just DM'd them beforehand and said, like, hey, just a heads up, I am posting my review today. It's not, like, the most positive review, so, like, just avoid looking at it kind of thing. I don't know. Like, ah, I don't know. I'm trying to think because, like, I have had situations where, like, I'm mutuals with an author on, like, Twitter or whatever, um, and I'm trying to remember how I handled not liking a book of theirs and not wanting them to see it. And I think, honestly, I think what I did was I posted it to Goodreads because I used to, you know, have all my t Goodreads updates um, update to my Twitter automatically. I think I just deleted um, the Twitter posts. And so like what I did was I wrote the review, but I didn't really like blast it um, on any of the platforms, namely Twitter, where I was like mutuals with the author. And I think that's kind of, again, like I think that OP is like lacking a little bit of tact, but I th do think the author friend, while like it's valid to feel hurt by this interaction, I think it's like, especially if you are an indie or self-published author, it's like having reviews is still a good thing. Like even if they're not the most positive review, having reviews at all is, is a good thing. Like it's better than no reviews. I think personally, like if I see a book that has like zero reviews, like that's, that's a red flag. You know what I mean? Whereas like, if there's at least a couple of reviews, even if people didn't really like them, I will still perhaps give it a chance. You know what I mean? So I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm thinking that the author friend is a little more wrong because again, I, I am also seeing this more from like the reviewer side where I'm like, well, if you're sending me an e arc, you're half expecting you know, the review to go either way. Like you can't expect every review of an advanced early copy that you send people to be positive. Like that's just ridiculous. A lot of people actually said, you're the asshole, soft, you're the asshole. Why would you say that to the friend? Someone said, here's the disconnect. You, your friend thought you would act as a friend and you treated it more as a business. Uh, I, again, once again, like I still think that they are doing their friend a favor by first of all, reading their book and leaving them a review, which again, I think even if it is a negative review, I think it's a net positive that they have a review. So like, I don't necessarily agree with this. Like, I don't think that it's wrong of them to, to leave a negative review. Like I really don't. Um, again, there are certain things that I wouldn't have done in, in OP's like position. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting though. Cause a lot of the comments, the top comments anyway, say you're the asshole, but the verdict itself is everyone, um, sucks here. Interesting. I am like a soft, everyone sucks here, but I'm leaning towards the side of the reviewer. Just again, probably because of bias, because of who I am and my experiences. All right. On to the next post. Am I the asshole for not supporting my friend's YouTube channel? <laughs> I am going to say no off the top of the post. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay. My friend recently started a YouTube channel, which is great. The rest of my friends in our group have been actively watching her videos, liking them and commenting on them, which is also great. I myself have subscribed to her, but her type of videos simply do not interest me. I have watched a few of her videos, but stopped. My other friends started bashing on me, how I didn't comment and give her a like on her videos. They said I wasn't supportive of her. I told them her videos didn't interest me and they accused me of saying my friend was a bad YouTuber, which I did not. I said that just because I wasn't interested in her videos doesn't mean that other people wouldn't be interested. I could see her content reaching out to certain other groups of people, but it's just not my style and I don't see why I must force myself to sit through all her videos and comment, yas queen, or something on everything. My friend said I was being an asshole and a bad friend. Now I feel bad. Am I the asshole? Um, interesting. I am gonna say not the asshole. Um, and the verdict does say not the asshole as well. It's interesting because they haven't actually said what their friend, like the friend who is the YouTuber actually thinks about this. It's just like the other friends in the friend group, which is I think quite interesting. I think where the friends are wrong is where they're accusing OP of um, saying that their friend is a bad YouTuber, which obviously OP didn't say. Um, but where I think that the OP like is a little wrong is like, you know, 
especially at the beginning, like if your friend has just started a YouTube channel, like engagement is so important and it's not that hard to just like click on a video, give it a like, put it on mute in the background or something. Um, or even if you don't want to like watch it through, just giving it a like, leaving a comment and it doesn't have to be anything. It can just be like a heart emoji or something. Like it takes two seconds to do. And if this is like actually a close friend of yours, like it's just a nice thing to do. At the same time, like I'm interested to see what the friend thinks because like, I don't like people in my real life to find my YouTube channel. So like I, I would be very interested to see what the friend thinks. I think maybe like a soft everyone sucks here for me. Again, I don't think the friend should have been putting words into the like OP's mouth, but I also think that OP is like being a little overly defensive about this. Um, and so I would say actually everyone sucks here softly. Okay, comments. Not the asshole. Your friends are definitely overreacting about it. What she's posting doesn't interest you and that's okay. I had a friend who had a YouTube channel. His content didn't interest me either. You're not an asshole or a bad friend for not being interested in the content she posts. I get that, but again, like, it's not about whether you're actually interested in their content or not. It's just like, it, and again, I don't think OP is being a bad friend by it, but it's just one of those things where it's like, it takes two seconds to do and like, yeah, the other friends are right. Like it's so little effort just to like show a little bit of support. The other one says, not the asshole. You subscribed and support her as a friend. That doesn't mean you have to be part of her audience. I don't think this person understands how YouTube algorithms work. Uh, that's not, <laughs> that's not really how it works, but okay. I think this is just one of those like, neither parties are wrong fully, but also neither parties are right. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm kind of like neutral on this one. Um, okay. I think we're going to do one more because I don't want this video to be like five hours long. I really like the title of this one. So I'm going to like, hopefully this is like a nice juicy one to end on. Um, but the title reads, am I the asshole for browsing books in the bookstore and then buying them digitally? I'm intrigued by this because I do sometimes do this, especially again, like this year as someone who is trying to switch over to like ebook buying, but I still like, you know, going into bookstores and having that experience. Sometimes I will just take pictures of books that I'm interested in and then like just add them to like my ebook wish list. You know what I mean? Um, but that's my initial thought about it, but I don't know what the post actually says. So let's see <laughs> what it says. This is a small thing, but I got in a discussion with a friend about it, so I want some more opinions. I prefer to read digital versions of books. I like being able to always have them on me um, to make the font bigger, read in bed while my partner is sleeping, use the search and dictionary features, highlight slash take notes, etc. But I like to search for new books to read in bookstores. Is this person me? Did I write this? <laughs> There's just something about browsing through physical books that I really enjoy. So I frequently go into bookstores and spend time looking around and adding books to my want to read list so that I can buy or borrow a digital version later. Literally, why is this person me? Um, okay. My friend said that it's kind of an asshole move to go into the bookstore when I know I'm not going to buy the book there. I sort of see where she's coming from, but I'm just wondering what others think. Thanks. Uh, there's an edit to this post. I just want to thank everyone who responded. I repeat, I appreciate your input and accept the official judgment of asshole. Who is saying this person is an asshole? Am I an asshole? Hold on. <laughs> I think it's interesting how split the comments are. They pretty much reflect my internal conflict about the issue. I also just wanted to add a few things that weren't in my original post, but that came up a few times in the comments. Number one. I don't go into the same bookstore every time. I live in a big urban area and spend time in different parts of the city. So I go into whichever shop I'm close to when I feel like browsing, sometimes a big chain, sometimes a small local shop. I do occasionally buy physical copies of books, like one out of every 15 or 20 books I read. And when I do, I make a point of purchasing from small retailers. As a lot of people mentioned, the space required to store physical books is a big factor as my apartment is quite small. Thank you again to everyone who weighed in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How the fuck is this person an asshole? Like, <laughs> this person is literally me. Um, and so, like, I'm feeling a little personally offended by this. Because, first of all, um, they don't go into the same bookstore. And even if they did go into the same bookstore, I don't think that affects, like, what I think about the situation. Because the reality is, like, you walk into a store to browse. Like, you are not obligated to buy anything from a store that you go into. I think that if you think that way, and if you think that, you know, going into a store necessitates a purchase. Like, I think that's fucking weird. I think it's one thing if it's like, you know, the store is offering a service, right? Like if you walk into like a cafe and you sit down and you don't buy anything, that's fucking weird, right? But a bookstore, like a retail store, like that is so weird to me to think that like, it's an asshole move to go into a retail store and not buy anything. 
Second of all, they are saying that when they do buy physical copies of books, they're buying from small retailers. And that I think that's a, a nice thing. Again, this is like, I feel like OP is literally me because that is what I try to do as well. Um, so I'm very like baffled by this. Okay, let me let me read the comments. Okay, if you go only to small bookstores that are privately owned, you're the asshole. If it's a nationwide chain like Barnes and Nobles, um, then not the asshole. And then someone replied to that comment saying, even with the big stores, he's still an asshole. He's taking the time of employees who could be helping people who actually intend to buy books and not just buy them online. I'm sorry, did the OP say that they are like making employees do stuff for them when they're in the store? Like, I don't think so. They just said they like to browse. I think this is absolute nonsense. Again, like when you walk into a retail store, you are not obligated to buy something. Repeat after me, you are not obligated to spend money when you don't want to. Like, this is so weird to me. These comments are wild. You're the asshole. You're using the bookstore for the service of previewing books, but then paying their competitor instead of the store. I think it's one thing if someone was um, browsing books in store and then buying a physical copy off like Amazon, for example. Like, I think that you could make the argument that that's an asshole move, whatever. Um, but you're buying literally a different copy, like a different format of the book. Someone else said, you're the asshole. Bookstores are a dying business. Many are struggling to make ends meet and you just stole money from that bookstore's pocket. They are not stealing money from that bookstore's pocket. Like I just, uh, again, I sympathize with this, obviously, because I love bookstores. I don't want bookstores to die out, um, especially indie bookstores, but like, you are not stealing from a bookstore's pocket because you walked in and then walked out without buying something. I think this is like the most weird ass consumerist mindset I've ever read. And I'm actually baffled at how so many of these comments are saying this, like this, what, what in the consumerism, right? Like what if you want to just browse and then like borrow it from your library? Like I don't, I, I'm so, I'm so baffled. I'm actually so baffled. Um, another comment, you're the asshole. I get it if you browse and only buy something sometimes, but to go in and never buy anything and never intend to buy anything, that's just wrong. I just want to ask these people, do you never just go window shopping? Does the concept of window shopping not exist anymore? Like I'm just so baffled like I'm so baffled I don't I don't understand like I don't think people understand you walking into a store and not buying anything every time you go in is not like I don't I don't know I just I'm so baffled okay finally we have some not the asshole um comments okay not the asshole that's just something modern bookstores have to deal with exactly ideally they'd sell ebooks too but you, they usually don't if you're looking to give someone a book then you could buy it from the place you usually browse at return the favor etc or maybe buy some gift cards or something sometimes but you don't have to 100 percent agree i think that if you are someone like me who does this and one way you can support is like if you use something like libro fm for example um you can like attach it to your like bookstore that you want to support and some of the money i believe goes to them so that's one way to do it. Like if you like audiobooks and you just, and you want to support your local bookstore, that's great. But like, again, I don't think it's necessary. Like this person said, it is just, it's a cost of doing business. Like I just, I don't understand all the like, you're the asshole comments. And also the verdict on this being you're the asshole. Wild. Uh, someone said, not the asshole. If bookstores made it more convenient to buy digital copies of the book in store, this would be less of a gray area. They're able to charge up your gift cards and loyalty cards. Why not credit your account with a redemption code? It's true. Um, I love bookstores, but simply don't have the space for books. My phone in contrast has a 900 title Kindle library and 50 gigs of space empty. I get it. Someone actually said this, this is actually so interesting. And I think this would be amazing. And I would personally love this, but they said they could put a QR code right on the book cover so that you could scan to buy the ebook. Super simple. I would actually think, I think this is genius. And I wish that people did that. Okay, this comment is interesting. Someone said it's called showrooming. Um, business owners hate it. There used to be a place in Australia or New Zealand that was specifically a showroom. They charged you an admi admission fee. You could check out various products. If you ordered something from them, they gave you back your admission fee. I don't know if this still exists. I'd have to say not the asshole because you're not doing anything wrong or illegal. Exactly. Um, the concept of a showroom is interesting to me. I know that there are like clothing places that do this, but like I've never heard of this done with books. Like, I think it's one thing if, like, again, I'm 
also coming at this from the perspective of someone who used to re work retail, albeit not in like book selling. Like I used to work at um, like a makeup and beauty store. Like even then, like it is kind of annoying. What, like because sometimes we would get people coming in and they would like do their entire face of makeup like um, in the morning um, with the testers, which honestly don't do that. It's gross. It's so unhygienic. But we would get people doing that and like, yeah, it affects your conversion rate or whatever, but like it doesn't really impact the business that much like I don't like I don't understand um but with books especially like it's not like this OP like is going in and damaging the books and like costing the business actual dollars by walking in and walking out you know what I mean like I just I don't understand one comment says you're the asshole for going into a store to research books to to buy them digitally. Dude, the online stores have the synopsis. There's no reason to go into a store. The only thing you're doing at this point is wasting the store's time. I disagree with this wholeheartedly. Even like when it comes to retail in general, like the whole point of having a brick and mortar store is so that people can browse in like a very organic way. Like online shopping is not the same as like in-person shopping. Online shopping, like you kind of have to know what you're looking for to be able to find it. Whereas like it's much easier in person. I personally feel like when it comes to books, when it comes to clothes, etc., to organically come across something and just like see something and be like, oh yeah, like that is kind of what I was looking for. I didn't know this existed before now, but like now I do. And I just think it's so ridiculous to say that like you could just get the same experience of browsing a bookstore um, as you would online, like just browsing Amazon. Because I also think that undermines like the booksellers in the stores, especially like with indie booksellers. Like I know that when I go to my like local bookstores, um, some of them will like curate special tables or special shelves. Um, there's this one bookstore in Toronto that I love and they have like a no plot vibes only kind of shelf and I love it. Like I just think that like you're undermining booksellers and like what they actually do to curate um, displays and tables and shelves when you say that you can just get the same experience browsing on Amazon. Like that's so wild to me. Like what a wild statement to make. Anyway, what a am I the asshole post to end on? Because like, I think most of the stories that we've like talked about today, I've kind of felt like neutral about, but like this one I feel very heated about because like I'm very baffled at like some of the comments on this. Um, but yeah, anyway, that is it for this video. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want me to do more of these types of videos in the future. But yeah, that is it for this video. If you stuck around to the end, I super, super appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know what some of your opinions are on some of the stories we covered today. And if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.